Welcome to Social Buzz Chat here on YouTube. We're having ourselves a party with our family, and my family this week includes Javier Biran of Audience. Hello. <laughs> we spoke about social TV and how to actually perfect your event strategy during, before, and after your event is finished. Make sure to watch us after the funky intro. <laughs> Did you enjoy the funky credits? Did you? Well, we're probably going to be changing them soon anyway, so don't get used to them. I'm joined by Javier Buron, uh, CEO and founder of Audience. Um, so tell me a bit about yourself. Like, I've got a few notes here, did some research. Like in January 2011, you founded Social Bro, and you have a master's in information systems and computer engineering. Like, that's incredible on my, my sort of things, because I'm, I'm, I just do social media. So. Tell me, like, how did you find yourself coming to want to invent Social Bro, yeah. like what you called it at the time, and our audience? Like, how did you get here? So, uh, has been so far a long story uh, since then. Um, I mean, the way was we, myself and the co-founder um, Alfredo, we always had a lot of different ideas in the research group of the university. Mm -hmm. So then to materialize those ideas, then we decided to create a consulting company because we didn't have resources. So then in that consulting company, we did uh, work for many companies and then we invested anything we were like um, uh, earning from those projects in our own projects. So when we discovered Twitter, and what you can do with the API as a developer that basically is you can access any, uh, any topic at any time uh, from everywhere, basically. That, that power we thought, oh my God, this is actually to be like God, like the, like yeah, the movie, like you can you know, <laughs> listen to everyone. So then we said, okay, this is gonna be, uh, this is gonna be uh, powerful, this is gonna be something important. So, we started in 2008 on Twitter myself. Uh, so then we, we, when we st like started uh, developing something, there were many things out there like Hootsuite, you know, the first Twitter clients. So then we wanted to solve problems that people were having by then. So we first solved uh, problems like who you should follow. Okay. So uh, actually before you showed me, that particular tool we have in the software that is very easy to find people. So yes, we, we started like uh, with that little like applications that help you to do that. But then one of them that is, uh, is followfriday.com uh, that was a famous tradition, still is there, but ha that you recommend other people to follow. Yeah, I get and then it. we did a it. ranking of the most uh, recommended Twitterers around the world. So that got a lot of traction, then our handle got a lot of followers, and guess what? We wonder ourselves who are our followers. Because when you have an audience uh, that is, in, in Twitter in particular, that is more than, let's say, 500 followers, you don't know who they are. But on the other side, social is about personal connection. Yeah. It's not about high level analytics, it's about who each individual of your followers, of your competitor, etc. So then that's why we invented uh, audience and that's it, that has been the, the, road, the, the road so far. And now we are 45 people, we have uh, uh, the main headquarter here in London. Uh, what well, I'm amazed to, to live uh, here. So it's not uh, like you've come very far at all, <laughs> is it? It's just <laughs> like a little. It's, yeah. oh, it's not that far yeah, at yeah, all. Yeah, it's yeah, like so bad, casual. Yeah. <laughs> um, you mentioned about who's following you and like um, tools to find new people online. But we were chatting earlier about TV. I love TV. I can I can watch it for days and days and days. Uh, a few Saturdays ago, I just did just sit in bed and watch Daredevil season two. You've probably done the same. Um, <laughs> But we mentioned the success of Making a Murderer, the Netflix it's true crime, isn't it? Is it true crime? Yeah. Yeah, it's true crime show. Um, and not just the success of the show, but actually the success on social networks. And we got talking about yeah. the intricacies around this. And my question to you is like, so how did it, how did Making a Mur Murderer do this? Yeah. And what made people tweet about it? Like, how? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very in 
interesting case, no? making, a, making a murder. And I think it has all the ingredients to, to make that happen. It's a real time, something that is happening at the moment, something that is true, yeah. something that when I, when I was watching it, you cannot believe it and that you have all the emotions, right? So it's more in that, in this case, I think that you have, that you have all the ingredients necessary to be something very big in social because it's real time, so it's happening now. There are still news about it. Uh, they, the reaction that people have, they are so big because you, when I watch it, I couldn't believe that. So yeah. I think that has kind of all the ingredients and then they, they were utilizing very well on social, leverage all these ingredients to make it a, a hit. Yeah, you're saying about um, it's happening in real time, utilizing all the ingredients. And so, we have a, I know it's a TV show, but you can also apply the same thinking behind like an event strategy to it. So if you were planning an event, for example, you can use making a murder as like an example, like as your case study. But if you were planning an event strategy, like how would you find ticks, as I like to call it, a success, yeah. like from all this real time information, for example? Yeah. So, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the very important metric for, uh, for any event or uh, let's say any TV show would be reach, right? They want to reach the, uh, the biggest audience. Uh, the, the, the biggest the audience, the better. However, uh, is depending on the objective, so you were telling about a particular event, then you always want to target the right people. You yeah. want to target the right audience. You want to, uh, at the end of the day, reach the right audience. So that's why it's very important to first, uh, if you are going to jump, let's say that you are managing an account and you are going to jump in a, on a TV show or something that uh, you know, can be related to, brand, to your brand, then it's very important to know the affinities of that audience uh, in order to uh, engage with the right show. Because they, if your audience in, is interested in a particular show, then, um, then why not? You should be there. Don't really jump into something that is not relevant for them just because it's trendy or something. So I think that's, the, that's the, a big thing in terms of planning. And an event, it's exactly the same. The play is the same. It's what are the things that your audience is interested in? So you bring the right, um, the right speakers. You bring the right sponsors, so you can actually leverage yeah. that information, all those, um, all that social intelligence, to actually leverage right sponsor at the right price as well. So um, yeah, I think that's. Uh, you talk about like leveraging the data, yeah. and Netflix did this perfectly. I don't know if you know the story about House of Cards and how it came to fruition. It was. Uh, Netflix were like, oh look, David Fincher films. People who like David Fincher also like Kevin Spacey and have also watched the original British series House of Cards. And they're like, okay, let's look at all these circles of interest and make it, this is, this is hand movement for Venn diagram, just in case you're wondering. And let's give users what they want. Like users are now more selective than ever. And so I want to ask you this question, like do you think broadcasters will look to Twitter for data to create the next big hit? And if so, what would they be looking for? Yeah, I mean, I think they are probably doing it. Uh, at the end of the day, when you have such amount of, like, vast of information out there, like is at this moment social media, uh, there are 500 million tweets a day, as we all know, yeah. and then you can uh, go historically and see at any point uh, on time what the people were saying about any particular thing, or show or topic, mm. then that's very powerful. And that's what we encourage brands to do is what would you do with that power? It's like a super power yeah. <laughs> that now people can leverage using uh, this particular business on Twitter that is getting it, that is when they are selling that data. No? It's very powerful. It is powerful. I, I'd like to think that um, I'd like to think that networks are listening to what's being said about their shows online. Say like five. Oh no, how long ago was it? I knew you said it was in university five years ago, but it's much further than that. So like ten years ago, there's a show called Firefly, and it has such a niche market and such a niche niche audience. But if it came out now, it wouldn't be cancelled because of 
the social engagement, the amount of like the sentiment that's driven by the people that love it. So I'm just hoping that big companies like Netflix, I'm gonna look down the camera now just in case they watch it. <laughs> companies like Netflix look at Carl Urban when he's saying to bring Judge Dredd back as a TV series and hear that people want this through Twitter. There we go, that's, that's a bit of a personal <laughs> thing done there. I'm yeah, I mean, but at the end of the day, I think you're right. You know, it's, uh, it's that they need to, uh, those that utilize that information to, to make decision, I think they will, they will be uh, on advantage. And things like, you know, what, are, what is the language millennials are using? I mean, I say millennials just to, to focus on something, but... Oh, you can't uh, use that yeah. term. We stopped that conversation. Generation Z. Or <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. You can say that. You can say that. That's fine. Um, so, you know, what is the language? What are the, the, the trending words that they are using? And yeah. how you can put that in your, uh, in your TV show, in your yeah. series? And, and obviously, from the point of view of executive producer, how we can yeah, leverage the most that heat that you were talking about by knowing more about what the people are interested in today. What they want. Um, before we finish up, I'm going to ask you for a quick hot snap question. You've only got, like, say, just answer in a few seconds. NFL getting Twitter. No. T NFL getting Twitter? No. No. Ooh. Twitter getting the NFL. How yeah. important is that? I mean, I think it's a change of paradigm in, in some sort of sense because I'm very curious about how Twitter is going to broadcast the NFL and how that the experience is going to be. I probably will be only a tweet, yeah. <laughs> just talking about simplicity, right? But, boom, yeah. video. But, you know, Twitter has um, some amazing uh, promotion tools like Twitter Amplify, mm. when you can leverage the content, very cool content from uh, MTV or different publishers to align with your content and with align your, with your business at the end of the day. And I think this is a step forward on, you know, Twitter as a medium and, and complementing TV that is um, uh, such a fit for, for Twitter, as we all know, the real time yeah. engagement uh, with, uh, with any, any, uh, any show no, on TV at the moment. And it's just going to be huge if it's just, it's all in one place. Yeah. I'm interested about it. Um, if you look down that camera there and say your Twitter handles, that one. Yeah, so my handle is at Javier Buron, uh, starting with J, uh, Spanish name. Uh, so yeah, follow me uh, if uh, for any tweets about social media, I regularly tweet on English. So uh, sometimes I will tweet in Spanish, but uh, that will be okay, I think. It's all right. <laughs> should be able to understand that. should know the language. Yeah. Um, yeah, thank you so much for coming along this evening. It was an incredible tweet chat that we had. You can find everything and anything that we do with social buzz chat over on uh, the hashtag SM buzz chat and we're getting a new little micro site made Hooray! <laughs> so you'll be able to come and find stuff really easily um thank you so much yeah thank you very much um, um, and thanks oof. the drum God, you do want uh, to yeah. leave there. thank you thank you <laughs> for the opportunity it has been amazing uh very intense the chat and but i love it stretch your fingers yeah it's like just like oh it just hurt it really hurt um Make sure to watch everything else that we've done on YouTube. The one with Steve Bartlett is exceptionally good and is where we said we were going to not talk about millennials anymore, but Javier just <laughs> ruined that Brought for us. <laughs> um, subscribe, and if you enjoy watching the show, discuss it using the hashtag SMBuzzChat. I'm Bacon Chin. You can find me online. I'll always respond to you, even if the feedback is bad. If it's bad, definitely send it. And if it's good, sing my praises. <laughs> um, and we'll see you again for another episode. Thank you and good night, cracking fingers. Hey, welcome to Social Buzz Chat here on YouTube. We're joined by Steve Bartlett. He loves lamp. And we're talking about the dreaded M word, which is millennials, and also addressing a few of Steve's concerns with the marketing industry. Join us after the really funky intro. That's right, nod your head. Nod your head.